even, again, there is complementarity. Should we only focus or mainly on cultural operators? Or should we, as I believe, also have a policy directed at civil society in the wider sense, how narrow or how broad? As cultural diplomacy by nature is long term. And we should warn in the strategy against the temptation among politicians to believe that short term results are not just likely but uh, crucial. The civil society dialogue is absolutely fundamental. The EU should include the protection of sites in the mandate of our peacekeepers abroad. We need to integrate human rights and our cultural strategy. Even Europe has power relations, including in culture. Culture is not cut from the political realities and from power struggles. So we better, I think, say it before it overwhelms us later. So try to go outside of the box, EU box. When you think about your cultural strategies for your neighbors. You know, sometimes getting artists and artists speaking to each other can be incredibly effective. I know that the great documentary, The Square, about the Egyptian revolution was screened in the Maidan in Ukraine recently as a kind of source of, of inspiration. I would like to say that I see this today as a laboratory for the strategies that EU had by using culture uh, in the external uh, in, in the external relation, but as different from 20 years ago, the European Union has the instrument, and it can be much more impactful because it is not like the Council of Europe, a sort of intergovernmental organization that that only has a, a consultative uh, uh, aim. But it does, it is able to create, uh, to create the instruments, the legal instruments that could, in the long term, be really impactful. Pour un Européen, nous ne pouvons euh, réellement apporter une valeur ajoutée que si nous aidons les États membres à mieux présenter leur culture nationale en leur donnant une dimension européenne qui les valorise. C'est particulièrement vrai pour les États euh, les plus les membres les plus récents. Il y a vraiment une urgence qui ne demande pas d'argent, c'est permettre une plus grande mobilité des artistes du Sud notamment, qui galèrent à chaque fois pour avoir des visas dans les différents pays européens, parce que tous les pays européens ne sont pas uniques là-dessus. Il faut avoir soit un visa Schengen pour certains pays européens, et pour l'Angleterre un autre visa. Et on additionne ça, c'est extrêmement compliqué de, de, pour les artistes du Sud d'atteindre des marchés, de s'exposer en Europe, et ça c'est une urgence absolue là-dessus, on ne peut pas avoir d'égalité de traitement avec les pays du Sud qui ont aussi une créativité s'il n'y a pas une mobilité comme les Européens qui ont les pays du Sud. We believe that it's sometimes better to leave kind of the ground, the grassroots, come up with their needs by telling funders and those that provide resources about what is required and then subsequently giving them the tools to, to do the work that they have to do. What would be the strategic approach if one day we will all realize that uh, the people we are talking to in the government, in the state uh, the cultural institutions, they will fail to communicate back to us. They will um, start to sort of, um, th th at some point we will start to understand that they are not considered to be our allies anymore. And what would be then strategic approach to talk directly to the, let's say, um, private sector or civil society? Because this is going to happen in Georgia, this is going to happen uh, in Ukraine. There is added value uh, at the European level. We know that there is, we just need to capture it and we need to, to translate it into concrete uh, action. We need to use our collective soft power better. Uh, yes,